Okay, it is 9.14 a.m. December the 6th, 2021, and I was able to confirm just right now that Schwab will now charge a 6.95 commission for LTC tradings, and I'm going to see if that is 6.95 in and out, so two 6.95 charges, or maybe if I'm in a setup and I exit, you know, small pieces, maybe two or three times if that's gonna charge commissions as well. If it's just going to charge a flat 695 fee and you know it's not going to cost anything to get out and it doesn't cost anything to get out in multiple pieces I might actually just stick with Schwab and you know just continue trading there and I might have to size up a little more or maybe just account for you know that uh, 695 commission in my trading when I do my dollar risk level that could be a possibility too so that's what I have in mind I'm going to probably just try an OTC setup if there is anything I can trade like a morning panic bounce play and if that's the case you know I'm gonna see if it's gonna charge me a whole bunch of money and if it does that's that's pretty unfortunate but you know um, at least I'll know for sure and on top of that it's just gonna take a while fidelity is like old-school when you try to link a bank account to their brokerage um, they do that you know two or three deposits and you have to verify how many you know um, pennies or those deposits before you can have an account linked you know to them so unfortunately that's probably gonna take a few days and I might just pretend to be a list of stock trader right and just look at list of stocks but I'm gonna try that with OTC setups you know if there is one and I'll make an update and see what the case is with that okay it is 941 I was in NLST and I'm gonna make an update and figure out what exactly at least it costed me to trade this I did not end up being profitable on this trade because of commissions if it wasn't for commissions I would have been profitable here but yeah I'm gonna just take a look and see what it ultimately was I did trade I think somewhat close to a $50 uh, not 50 a $30 risk level maybe I should trade a $50 risk level but you know, I, I traded this one pretty safely, and, you know, according to that $30 risk level, I didn't trade that large of a size. I traded 50 shares, and I was in at um, $5, and I guess 6 cents, basically. Yeah, just that was the position size there. This thing can turn around because, you know, it was trying to play off of 5. It finally broke under it. Everybody dumps their shares and now it's going to turn around. I just don't like how VWAP is very close to where it's trading. And that means there isn't that much range in this setup, number one. And number two, you know, this thing can fail more likely than not, as it already did here. But there's a good chance it might try to play off of $5 and do something. And it had a gap down, so, you know, it closed at 671 This thing opened at 580 and it had a morning panic on top of that, so that offers it a lot of opportunity for it to try to turn around and do something for the rest of the day and it was pretty cool because it did drop to this level right here I'll make an update later to see what this one does and yeah I think I might have to size up or just trade on fidelity and I don't like trading fidelity or at least I don't think I will because of the platform it isn't as nice as Schwab but I think it's worth six bucks <laughs> in and out and I didn't trade at ABB I was looking at it I don't think I ever placed an order yeah I never placed an order there with ABB but I didn't like how they would just not let go of the, the person on the ask and it traded with a spread which was desperate again VWAP was super close to it so this isn't a surprise and this one isn't as nice as NLST because NLST looked a lot better on the daily chart right it was still near its highs and it had a gap down while AABB is just fading every single day so it's just less ideal less likely that it's going to do something nice ILUS is trying to play off of this level I guess but um, nothing too incredible and I think TGGI just didn't have the volume for me to really be interested in it it was kind of trading weird but I mean that one's trying to do something too so yeah I'll make an update later to see what ultimately ended up being the case in terms of profitability it's kind of hard to tell because I did move out money out of the account at the same time so it's kind of hard for me to figure out exactly how much um, I lost if it was two, you know in and out positions um, what I did was 
I guess I didn't really go over the setup. I was in NLST. I was in this at 9.33, morning panic bounce play. I was in right here at basically um, $5.06. So right about here was my entry. And I didn't like how VWAP again was getting super close. There was more distance um, previously. I sold 10 shares at 9.34. You know, just, I didn't really want to sell 10 shares, but I just wanted to to see if it would count an extra commission you know for me to partially exit it and um, again this is all intraday uh, maybe over a few days you know they will charge commissions for partial exits like somebody said on reddit and the last sell which was the chunk of this entire position of 50 shares was sold at 934 and that was up in this you know range right here at about 516 I just again didn't like how VWAP was so close so when it had a big spike towards VWAP I decided to get out and it did save me because it didn't really play off of $5 it broke under it but yeah that's where I'm at right now I'll make an update to see um, what's Schwab going to do in terms of OTC commissions all right it is 10.08 a.m. and I think for my math um I was charged $11.04 with commissions, which doesn't make any sense to me because then I think maybe $6.95 they entered the trade, but why did I get this $4.09 uh, you know, commission as well? Is it because I sold a partial position? I think it's going to be until next day or maybe after the market is closed when Schwab like you know sends an email with a complete confirmation and they go over the entries and exits as well as any commissions and then I can make sense out of it and unfortunately because of you know that thing with commissions it is kind of messing up my mindset in terms of how to trade like you know setups and putting a risk level so I probably am just not going to trade anymore on Schwab and I will be probably moving my money to Fidelity but I'll still keep an account with Schwab for listed stocks because, again, I like the platform a lot more. And if it seems just really hard trading on Fidelity, that's going to really suck. But I can try trading on Interactive Brokers because their platform is like Schwab. It's very nice to order entry box. And while they are going to charge commissions, they charge, um, I believe, like a very small amount depending on how many shares you trade. And if it makes sense, I might consider Interactive Brokers. But... This is a setup that could, in theory, work out, but, you know, it just kind of messes me up. Maybe it's not even a good setup. It's just that I'm messed up, like, you know, my mindset because of the thing with, um, you know, commissions. But this could be like a morning panic bounce play, high or low setup. The only thing I don't like is that it's a bit high off of the bottom right here, but this could be the spike, right? It comes back, and it does something nice above VWAP. It breaks VWAP. We do have a wall of bidders at 13. That seems to actually be supporting it and maybe cut losses quickly if it breaks this level or even risk the day low which is what I would do risk the day low and some slippage and then trade accordingly because that's like worst case scenario and I think when you account for worst case scenario it almost never happens and then when you do um, that you know it can help you be profitable I guess but Again, my mindset is just messed up, but in theory this thing can break out. I'm glad it did do a turnaround despite how ugly it looks on a daily chart. As for NLST, this could also be a buy, um, an inverse head and shoulders. Shoulder, excuse me, my voice cracked. Wow, shoulder, head, shoulder. That could be a setup there too, but again, my mindset is just screwed up, really. Just really screwed up, unfortunately. Yeah, that's a thing, so... Yeah, worst case scenario, I won't be trading for a few days unless it's a list of stock setup. I just don't want to put in like a two thousand dollar position. Yeah, I don't feel. I don't feel like I, I'm just. I don't want to jump from trading an average of a four hundred dollar position size to twenty five hundred dollar plus. That just seems a little bit too much. Maybe gradually, I can use um, Fidelity as like a set of training wheels, right? And then I can trade larger if I can just try to accelerate there at a more gradual pace than to just jump from you know trading an average of four hundred dollar position size to um, freaking twenty five hundred dollars i think that would help me greatly and i think i am gonna have to close or not close but just empty out my short selling account because um with commissions that's not a feasible thing anymore because of that two dollar fifty cent rule um, i'm sorry this is like 
dragged out and boring but um, I'm definitely gonna be moving money out of the short selling accounts I don't really think I want to keep it for shorting listed stocks and they don't seem to really have shares available on a lot of listed stocks either so I'll probably consider moving money there and I'll move money from the main day trading um, day trade day trading account and just continue from there I do see ISIG but I don't see anything that I would want to really trade with this it is kind of nice that it's trading with a lot of volume but I don't like how it's done that before and it just sold off so that's what I have for right now I'll make an update later it might not be until tomorrow until I figure out exactly how much are they going um, to charge in commissions and how much I was charged in this setup but um, yeah I'll, I'll make an update later all right it is 5 34 p.m. and then I am here to call it off I just had one trade with NLST my mindset was really messed up you know just me trying to figure out the whole thing with commissions I'm not extremely sure how do they charge I think it was eleven dollars and four cents of commissions which is a lot obviously for like a two hundred and fifty dollar position I'm gonna find out tomorrow when Schwab does that e confirm whatever email and it tells you exactly how much are they charging commissions I'm gonna find out how do they charge 11 if it was 695 to get in and then maybe the rest was because I had a partial exit or I, I, I don't know I'm gonna figure out how that thing works but yeah clearly I'm not gonna make money trading on Schwab anymore with the position sizes that I am taking so what I did was that I wired out um, well I guess I didn't wire but I basically have a seven thousand dollar transfer going to an interactive brokers account and two thousand dollars on fidelity i'm gonna mess with both i like the platform on interactive brokers much more than fidelity but fidelity doesn't charge anything um, in terms of commissions right now for otc so i'm gonna figure out what works best and i know interactive brokers does charge i believe like a very small amount Per share and you know for example I traded 50 shares here on this OTC setup NLST and I don't necessarily trade very often a $5 OTC but in theory here I would have traded you know 50 shares so 50 shares this times 50 shares right it's 25 cents and then to exit that's gonna be 50 cents instead of the $11 that I freaking had to pay for in commissions and then the setup ended up being a loser I can be fine with 50 cents and I think they might have a minimum commission fee also on OTC's which is a dollar I'm not extremely sure it might just be you know um, this amount per share and in that case still two dollars of commissions I only made four bucks on that trade in theory without commissions being included so I would have still have been profitable there and you know it didn't play out obviously the morning panic bounce play did not play out then and there when I traded it it did head much lower and this is when I last had that recording thinking about that Embers head and shoulders I'm glad this one worked out it went from five bucks to almost um, six dollars almost a 20% move there which is pretty impressive I think like a 17% move pretty nice in terms of that and I think for AABB I think that one didn't work out it had a little dip it did make a move later but you know my mindset was just really messed up trying to mess around with commissions and everything like that I didn't like the way TGGI had that panic it wasn't really a nice one because of the volume and as for the listed stock this one was super nice I've seen this so many times eventually I'm gonna nail one of these but I didn't do it today again just kinda screwed up messing around with um, brokers trying to understand the path I should take and that is my fault I should have um, been prepared last week you know for this week because now even though I have two transfers one for again fidelity and the other one with interactive brokers it's gonna take several days to go through and then I have to probably purchase data on um, you know interactive brokers so I could you know very easily just click on the level two um, well in that case it'll be a level one and I can kinda change position um, my, my limit size very quickly so yeah, if uh, Fidelity had a nicer platform where it would just have an estimated cost before the order goes through, um, I think they do have one like when you click place order or whatever and it has that little pop up thing. But, you know, it doesn't have something like this right on the platform where you can just mess around 
Um, fortunately, that's not the thing there with Fidelity. If it was, that would have been much nicer, and I probably would be trading there. But yeah, I'm going to have to experiment with those two brokers. I did have um, a loss today just because of commissions again with you know that trade with NLST. And although I did trade a $30 risk level, it was not profitable because the size was just too small for what it was. And I think I might try to mess with Fidelity. And then if I can keep increasing size, you know, maybe, maybe actually I'll do interactive brokers because, um, they, they charge like, they charge like a commission, um, based on how many shares, but it's maxed, you know, capped at, um, uh, 1% of the trade value. And then once I trade even larger in theory from there, I can move the fidelity perhaps and then maybe go back to Charles Schwab eventually. I, I'm not extremely sure, but it's obviously going to take some time to figure out. That's really all I have for today. And yeah, I should have totally have been prepared um, a week ago, so I will be ready right now. But I guess, you know, it's a great lesson there. Yeah, unfortunately, Schwab, I think, lost a lot of customers because of that decision they made.